it just feels more real um, compared to the older model. And that, for me, really does accelerate the newer model above and beyond the 24.0. Hello to you. I hope I find you well. It's great to see you again. And today we've got the review of a product that actually I've been waiting for, I think it must be about six years now, along with a lot of other people. And you may have noticed the locomotives behind me there. No, they're not the ones I'm reviewing, but they'll give you a clue to the one that I am. It's the Backman Class 24-1. Now, it was announced such a long time ago, and we've been waiting and waiting, and it finally came through. Now, I picked one of these up, and I'll be really looking forward to seeing how much of an improvement it is over the original Class 24, which as you might remember came out nearly 20 years ago. So it was long overdue for an update and I know that there was a few areas on that model that enthusiasts have pointed out that weren't necessarily quite right. So I'm really looking forward to see have Backman corrected these. So come with me in association with Trainomatic, sponsors of today's video, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. And you can check them out at the affiliate link for their uh, UK stockist down below, Tram Fabrique. But I'm really excited to show you this locomotive. Come with me. <laughs> This is the model, the all-new Class 24-1 from Backman. It's been a little while since we reviewed a Backman model. And also, stay tuned towards the end of the video, and we're going to be doing a full step-by-step uh, -step guide on how to DCC fit this model in association with Trainomatic. And I've got here ready the 21-pin decoder that we're going to be using to do that. But I'm quite excited by this. As I said in the introduction, the original release of the Backman Class 24 was the 24-0. It was a great model in its day, and um, certainly I've had no qualms about keeping four examples in my fleet, and I've been very, very satisfied with that. There's a lot of them about. You can pick them up secondhand relatively inexpensively. But with this, we get an all new tooled model. Uh, and you can see their catalog number 32-442, class 24-1. And I've gone for the tops blue example, because as you all know, I really do have a soft spot for that livery. And uh, as you can see, they're just confirming that it's a 21 pin DCC ready chassis. So it's a pretty standard backman box, so we're going to breeze through that pretty quickly. And I haven't actually yet got this out of the box at all. So we're seeing this together for the first time. Let's pull that off. And the first thing that I've noticed here is we get a little bag with what appear to be an etched, I'm guessing, works plates. So we just got in there. I'm not sure whether it will focus on them. Yeah, we've got little etched works plates, uh, which I suspect that they're tampo printed on. Yeah, I can just see them there on the doors. Um, so if you really desire to, um, they do cover you with some etched ones, which you can then very carefully glue on over the top and they'll completely cover up that uh, printed example. But actually for most people, that's probably good enough to just uh, leave it be. And we also get a wealth of extra detail. We get uh, these front snow plows. I think they were particularly in use on the Scottish examples and they just fit neatly into the NEM pocket, which is actually a really nice development. I never saw anything like this for the previous versions of the 24s and 25s. Uh, certainly the ones which I own never came fitted with them. And then we've also got this uh, really lovely wealth of buffer beam detail. With the original releases, you just got a sprue with plain black plastic bits and pieces. So it's actually really quite pleasing to see these picked out with the orange and the yellow and uh, even got some stuff there with the silver on as well. So they'll cover us for vacuum pipes, uh, train heating and possibly even air pipes as well. There's quite a wealth of detail in there, but of course, if you do fit these, be warned, it's an either or with the front couplings. 
So I'm going to lift this straight out of the rest of the packaging. It's the standard Batman clamshell packaging. This bit's intriguing. I guess it's so that they can use this with different, uh, uh, <laughs> different bits and pieces. It's, I've never really seen that before, so I just uh, thought I'd mention it. But it does keep the model nicely located in this, so there's no tendency for it to move around in transit and get damaged. Now straight out of the box, uh, the shade of blue to me really is lovely. They've captured that rail blue and that almost satin finish with it ever so well. I'm also struck by this extra detail on the roof. With the original releases, this was um, all the roof detail was just moulded on by and large. But this does feel like they're separate, so we've got um, a, it looks like a separate piece as it should. And the colour match on that is perfectly done. Uh, you really have to look closely to realise that that's separately applied pieces. There's much more fidelity as well to things like uh, we've got the uh, I think it's like a handhold the actual steps are plated over on the side and I guess this would have been to go up to fill the uh, boiler water tank for the actual train steam heating and of course as electrification uh, started to spread around the network they didn't really want staff getting up there and getting potentially standing up and electrocuting themselves so these got plated over. It's nice to see that that has been accurately represented and uh, it's interesting, I do wonder whether the BR Green version, which is also available, is that model with these plated over as well, or are they actually as steps? Uh, I don't actually know. The area that really draws my eye is a complete retool of this underframe detail. On the original Class 24, that was one of the areas that people did complain a fair amount about. So I'm going to bring down here what was actually one of the very first uh, Batman Class 24, and this is 24081. It was the very first Topps Blue release, and you can see the difference with those underframes. Um, it's just so much more relief and detail, and these uh, the fuel tanks and battery boxes in the middle there, they just look so flat and lifeless on the old model by comparison. Um, I did have a little bit of apprehension about buying this model, it must be said. I have four of the older Batman 24s, and I know when I, I re-equipped re my fleet with the Class 3, um, the Batman Class 3 was very much a game changer to the point where the older version was just like a toy by comparison. With these, the older model, I guess it looks all right until you look at, at along there. It's, it's below the sole bar. Uh, well, the sole bar and below, that really is a huge difference on these. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm sold, I have to say. I really am sold. The bogeys on the original version, pretty good. It had all-wheel pickup, all-wheel drive, just as the new version does. But I'm also seeing, let me just check there, the older version chassis has very flat-faced wheels. And, you know, they, they pass for the day. But what I can notice here is that it's actually got completely correct pattern wheels underneath there. And as they spin round, you can see that series of holes. It does look really good. And I've got uh, every expectation that little details like that can actually go a long way to just improving the look. We've seen that with um, tender uh, Pacific type locomotives where the front bogey is correctly sprung in the middle. It does alter how a locomotive looks as it tracks through the track work. And I think with that, that is, whilst it is fairly hidden, I think it is going to be noticeable. These bogies do look like they've got a lot more detail going on. Uh, just bring back the older version. These just look a little bit flatter. Not by much. They were good for their day, but there certainly uh, looks a little bit more finesse going on. Um, I think we've got slightly more 3D relief. It's difficult to actually put my finger on it, but I do prefer these bogies. The other area which does look quite good, these ladders. Uh, on the older version, these had a habit of coming off and getting lost. Um, but they look uh, a lot more robust on these. And we've got sandpipes, which yeah, the older version has, but they just everything looks a little bit finer. The actual brake blocks don't 
um, actually match up to the treads of the wheels. But I always find that to be a little bit of um, a, uh, a red herring. I don't think it detracts very much. And uh, it, I guess it just makes things a lot easier. You don't have to have separate um, brake blocks in there to um, be assembled. So I guess it keeps a little bit of the cost down. These handrails look to be, yeah, they're plastic as well. I did wonder whether they would have gone to metal handrails because that was the other bugbear with the older Class 24 is that these plastic handrails had a habit of falling off. Now, this particular example has a full complement, but I don't think any of my other Class 24 still possess all eight handrails because they did have a habit of coming off. Um, and as you can see, the new ones are a lot finer as well. The actual body side detail, um, it's not picked out in the grills in the same way. The, the old one you can see there, the grills are kind of picked out in this kind of greyish colour, which I quite like, but um, I don't know, maybe it's wrong. <laughs> But certainly um, there's still quite a, a sharpness to the louvres and you can see there and you can see the, the actual structure behind there. That does look pretty good even though it does appear to be a solid moulded item. But again I'm drawn to this sole bar area. There is so much more relief detail. We've got separately applied bits and pieces with different colours. It, 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 it just feels more real. Um, compared to the older model and um, that for me when I was looking at the pictures of these models on the website that is very much something that caught my eye and you can see there with these two models side by side it really does accelerate the newer model above and beyond the 24.0. Now the 24.1 has the uh, head code blind on the top of the cab there and that is something that I think a lot of people assume that the difference between a 25.0 and a 25.1 is that. But I'm told that some of the 25.1s were skinheads like this, so it's not necessarily a perfect guide. Looking at the front there, there does seem to be other small detail changes. The actual arch of the uh, across the top of the cab looks ever so slightly more, um, a, a sort of a, a larger radius on the, um, you know, it, it goes up more on the newer model. That looks a lot flatter. I don't know whether they were both the same angle or whether the head code box changed things, but there does also appear to be a slightly smaller middle window. I don't know whether that's an optical illusion. The actual connector doors there look, um, there's a lot less detail going on, but of course with the head code box this doesn't have fair uh, discs, um, which the this particular version does. Um, looking at those handrails, again, they're much finer on the newer model. They look a bit chunkier on the old ones. I actually prefer the windscreen wipers on the old model, but I think there is more detail on the new one. And I particularly like the way that uh, they're all wet round, wound round to zeros, but one of the zero is slightly misaligned, and you saw that a lot on locomotives. Um, again, if you look to the other end, that I really like that effect. It's that kind of attention to detail that really works for me. The model has directional lighting, so in the forwards direction the head code box lights up and uh, in the rear we've got the red tail lights. Now these can be altered as per all of Bankman's diesel locomotives these days by some hidden away dip switches on the bottom and you can also turn the cab lighting on and off as well. But if you're going on the DCC route really you can leave these be and you can control those using CVs and the function buttons. Another upgrade you can see there in this from the very early 24s is the NEM pocketed slimline tension lock couplings. Of course later on the 24Os did get that upgrade as well but of course this being a modern model we really wouldn't expect anything less. Buffers are metal turned and incredibly fine but robust and I do like those and uh, they do come with the correct slightly large profile but that's just how the real locomotives were. When it comes to roof detail let's just compare the two um, and you can see that there is other detail differences between the um, 24.1 and the 24.0 um, but by and large 
there's a lot of other detail which has been tracked over but improved. So this particular vent here um, is smaller on the newer model. There's definitely some tweaking on bits and pieces. This, um, I think it's the silencer, uh, is pronounced on this. We've got uh, the lovely little handrails all on there, which are just kind of missing from the older model. Uh, the cutouts here look slightly smaller. These are bigger on here. But everything else is where it should be. Um, we've got fans down in there. And yeah, if you blow in, they spin round. I'm not never entirely sure why they do that, because short of just blowing down into it, you can't make them spin, but they put them in freewheeling. In terms of running characteristics, it worked amazingly well on the DCC Concepts Rolling Road. I set this up and it just it just moved away straight out of the box uh, at an absolute crawl. Uh, there was no problems, no stuttering, no notchiness to the transmission. It just really felt like a silky smooth mechanism. Whilst Backman does recommend one hour's running in, it is the case that I feel that this model doesn't really truly need it, such is the quality of the assembly of the mechanism. All in all, I think this is a great package and I'm really pleased to be able to add this to my fleet. Now I'm going to be converting this straight away to DCC. So for this we've got our Trainomatic uh, 21 pin decoder and this is something that you can add all manner of uh, additional modules to this. Uh, the Smart Power Pack is something that we have dealt with on other videos and that is available through Tramfabrique at the uh, links down below. But I'm also, I've also been made aware that there's a Suzy sort of sound module that you can add to these as well. And that is an area that uh, maybe in a future video I really would like to look into. But for now, we're going to go ahead with the bog standard DCC fitting. With the weight that this locomotive has, which is reasonably substantial for its size, there's really no need to worry about dodgy pickups and it has rolling momentum. And you'll probably see some of the flywheels when we get inside that mean that really a smart power pack is a bit of a luxury that I'm not going to bother fitting on this example. If we turn it over, we're looking for some screws. It's a strange location to put screws, which on the face of it, my screwdriver is not long enough to go down there. Now, this might be longer, but it's also got a bigger head. Uh, yeah, that's on there. I don't see why it had to have the screws hidden down here. The older version didn't. It feels awkward and certainly getting these back in is going to be an issue. Because I'm doing these by feel rather than by sight. I can't see the hole. I'm having to step up to the larger sized screwdriver. I have a feeling that Yes, there's also an additional screw front and back. And this, I guess, will just um, hold the sole bar and the chassis up against the cabs. On the older model, it kind of clipped in, but could be a little bit tricky to locate. And then body does come out. Now remember, don't forget those wires that we've been warned about. So I don't know how much slack we get. We just have enough there. What's interesting is, according to the paperwork, this comes with a factory fitted speaker. So actually, interestingly enough, something like a Soundtrax decoder would be an interesting fit to this if we could find one with a class 24 sound. Sound fitting, once we've got this far, should actually be quite easy. Now, without putting too much strain on uh, these wires, I'm going to take the blanking plug out, just carefully lever it from each side. Put that to one side. And then we're going straight in with our trainomatic. 21 pin decoder. I 
and the 21 pins are actually really easy to fit so I'm just looking a locating pin is that side which matches up with that there so loosely put it on make sure it's lined up and gentle and even pressure and that's all now fitted in there so whilst we've got it opened up one thing I will say is that the cab inserts there are kind of glued in and this is a bit like what I saw with the Daypol class 22 and it does mean it's very difficult to get in there without breaking glue bonds um, to be able to fit things like extra crew so um, not quite as useful um, as the 24.0 model where you could get direct access for adding crew but uh, I don't think that that's a big big issue now we've got three of four screws have dropped out and I don't know which screw didn't or whether it did and has got lost and this this is what I don't really like about these sort of blind screw holes hidden away inside the bogies uh, for me it doesn't I don't know where that other screw's gone let me just take this back out do we have any sign of the screw no the screw has dropped down somewhere into the mechanism it is unfortunate there we go and you've got to watch out for that when you've got blind holes like this then unfortunately it means that um, the screws are very likely to get lost as you can see it's not easy in the slightest to put this top back on sorry Bankman but this just isn't it isn't a good method let me try and magnetize my screwdriver and see if, if this helps it's quite a strong magnet so with the screwdriver magnetized I'm going in completely blind here has that hit the thread yeah it has so actually magnetizing the screwdriver I'm just using a neodymium magnet there does help but then of course you're left with a magnetized screwdriver which isn't necessarily what you want for some of the other tasks that you do around the model railway and uh, I don't currently have access to a demagnetizer. The detail on this model is amazing, that much has to be said, but it's come at a cost in the design to ease of getting the top on and off. But there we have it, finally we've got that DCC decoder in, we're going to get it on the programming track, and then we're going to put this locomotive through its paces on DCC. The locomotive has a pretty nice and smooth pickup and it does seem to have a lot of grunt and a lot of power. With the Trainomatic decoder the response is really nice and smooth and no fiddling with CVs is required at all for this. It just does exactly what it's supposed to out of the tin. When it comes to comparing the Class 24-1 to some of the previous offerings in the Backman Type 2 stable well, it definitely is a marked improvement over the class 24-0 that they did nearly 20 years ago. That was a good model in its day, but certainly this new model really has upped the game considerably. And it even makes me look forward to the retooled class 25. Again, another stalwart of the Batman stable and one which has been a firm favourite of mine. You can actually see the difference in the underframe detail between the old 25 over there and the new 24-1. There really isn't any comparison below the sole bar, so I'm really, really pleased with this offering. We've got full directional controlled lighting on DCC, 
So you can see the rear markers and then when it's going forwards the head code box lights up. And that's the same at both ends. If you want to get rid of those tail lights, say for example if this locomotive is hauling a train rather than going around light locomotive, you may have to either fiddle with the CVs or just turn them off on the dip switch underneath. When it comes to the cab lights, these are actually peculiarly on uh, F5 I've had to press for these. So you can see there, F5 turns them on at both ends of the locomotives and uh, that's them off, on and off. And um, it's a shame in a way that Bankman haven't gone for independent cab lights, but it's not a big deal. None of the other F keys seem to do anything, so it's just a little quirk of this model. But it is really nicely done. And when we do illuminate those uh, cabs, you can see that there is actually a wealth of detail in there, including, I love that fire extinguisher. That very much is a plus. There's such room and detail in there. It's just a shame that they're not the easiest of access for adding crew figures, but certainly they're the best cabs I've seen in a ready-to-run diesel locomotive um, so far. That leaves us now to turn to the scores. First up is finish, and I really do like this. It's got a lovely shade of blue that captures the look of the prototype really, really well. It will benefit from weathering, but then I think most models do. But there's a lot of detail on this, and a light coat of weathering would really bring a lot of that to the fore. The roof detail I was particularly impressed by. But then there's also the interior of the cabs is really, really nice, particularly with those uh, fire extinguishers and other details, which I've not seen in a ready to run locomotive before. When it comes to the actual sole bar and the detail on that and the tanks underneath, this is where the biggest improvement for me comes over the much older 24-0 model. And it really has blown me away somewhat. It's a great model and I think I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. Functionality. The actual running characteristics of this locomotive are really, really good. It was smooth and silky out of the box, both on DC and DCC. All the functions worked as they should. I didn't actually need to run it in, although Batman do recommend that you run it in for around an hour. Um, but actually the mechanism was so well to put together that it didn't really need it. And I just like the quality of these models. It's got a tremendous weight to it, and that gives it a very, very good haulage capacity that's actually arguably better than a great many other locomotives in its class on the market. So again, I'm going to give this a 9.1 out of 10. Ease of use. Well, when it came to the DCC fitting, major plus point for me is that pre-fitted speaker. We're starting to see that an awful lot on locomotives coming through, and it does save a lot of aggravation trying to source and fit a speaker. And it really does mean that it's ever so simple to sound fit this locomotive. Getting the body off, though, proved to be a little bit of a challenge. I can see what Batman were trying to do, but I do feel that hiding the four main body screws underneath the bogies, where it just you're going in blind and you're having to use not necessarily the best screwdriver for the job, because it has to have such a thin neck to reach down that far, I just felt was a little bit awkward. And I had a few stalled attempts getting the top off this locomotive, but I did get there in the end, and it's not as bad as some locomotives that I've reviewed over the last few years, but certainly it wasn't the easiest either. Once you're into it, there is a lot of space in there. If you want to add extra speakers, well, you can do that. If you want to add in all manner of things like stay alive capacitors or extra features, there is space to do that. So overall, there's a few little niggles, but actually, nothing that's unsurmountable, and I'm going to give this an 8.1 out of 10. When it comes to aesthetics, Batman really have captured the look of the prototypes, and really they've taken on board the shortcomings of the 24.0 model, and have really made a really great effort at sorting them out. 
we really do have here a ready to run mass market locomotive that is ready to take on the uh, low volume high quality opposition that has sprung up in the intervening years and I do think that this model is very much going to hold its own. I really love all of this separately applied detail everywhere on it, not just on the sole bar and the underside and these tanks underneath, but the bogies look good. Those wheels too, with the correct faces, it's all nicely done. And I really, I can't say enough, inside that cab is just how it should be. Everything's there, the bulkhead detail is all picked out. I am loving this model, it has to be said. I also like the separately applied silencer details on the roof. It does work really well. And those grab handles where the uh, uh, tank fillers are, it just all goes together to a really nice package. And also, there's so much to pick out on this model. I do like the head code boxes, wound round to zero because they would no longer be in use, but not quite lined up and different at both ends. It's the nice touches like this that really give a model locomotive its character. So I'm going to give this a 9.8 out of 10. When it comes to value for money, they are expensive, but not necessarily as expensive as some of the steam locomotives that we've seen of late. The RRP is quite high, but I managed to pick up this example for £127. It's up there at the top end of the bracket, really, of what I would expect to pay for a Bobo Type 2 diesel. But certainly, you get a lot of model for your money. This isn't a warmed over version of the 24 naught. This is all tooled. And we've waited around six years for this, and I think it has been worth the wait. The model performs faultlessly, and there are so many little details to it, which really, the more you look, the more you're rewarded. That yes, it does give value for money. And I'm going to give this an 8.2 out of 10. That combines together to give a very, very good score of 44.2 out of 50. And can I recommend this model? Certainly I can. If you do like the look of this model, don't forget that we've got some affiliate links in the description box down below, and that'll take you to where you can get one of these models for yourself at the same price that I paid. It really is a nice offering from Backman, and it leaves me thinking, I am very much looking forward to the retooled Class 25 that is due out shortly. It's been really great having your company and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to tickle that like button and also share us on social media. Let other people know about the content that we're putting out there on the YouTube channel. And if you haven't already done so, then do please consider subscribing and uh, keep an eye out for future videos. But until next time, I've been Jennifer Kirk and I've really enjoyed having you along for this and hope to see you again. Take great care of yourself. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Trish Bits, Sparky 107107, George Butterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Sears, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grant Line Products, and Judge Mortis. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.